Google killed my traffic. They've actually murdered it on more than one occasion. Google algorithm updates have actually knocked my traffic down over 20% on three occasions. But did I freak out? No. And why is that? Well, it's because I'm running my blog like a real business. Traffic fluctuations are just a part of the game when it comes to running a successful blog. But how do we prepare for it? And how do we future-proof our site and create the best possible content to not only get our traffic back, but to increase it and blow past where it was before? Well, in this video, I'm gonna cover how to protect yourself from Google algorithm updates. So by the end of this video, you'll have an exact action plan to implement on your website, including exactly what I'm doing about Google's product review updates as well in the 2020s. But before before we get started, I want to invite you to watch my free masterclass on how to start a profitable blogging business. Make sure to click the link in the description below if you're interested in this free training on my content link building and affiliate marketing strategies, how I make over $200,000 a month with my blog. Click that link in the description below and let's get into the topic for today. All right, so first we have to cover, you know, Google algorithm updates in a nutshell. And I get this question a lot, like, what do you do about this update or that update or the product review update? And did it kill your traffic? Are you worried? Are you worried? Are you worried? And it's all this worry and fear based on Google manual actions, penalties, updates, and everything. Because the Google algorithm gods are out there. And the more mysterious they are, and the more unknown that we understand Google, the more fearful we are in our hearts and our souls. And it's true. And it's like, you know, Algorithm updates happen, we can't control it. YouTube algorithms, Google algorithms, we live in a world of algorithms, Facebook algorithms, TikTok algorithms. It's all AI, it's all taking over. But while we're still living in the 2020s, before we go into the metaverse and Ready Player One, we need to learn about these algorithms and understand how they work if we wanna make real money in this world of Web 2.0. So first I wanna cover, the, the main principle is that traffic does not equal revenue. So I've seen this countless times about sites bragging about traffic, bragging about these things or saying, you know, they had no fluctuations in traffic or traffic dipped and I lost my business. What does this mean? Well, to me, traffic does not equal revenue because I've seen traffic dips. Back in, I think it was 2019, or 2020, I was at 500K and it dipped down to 400K monthly visitors, but revenue did not change. You know, traffic dipped, but ultimately due to multiple revenue streams, revenue did not change. In, you know, in, in fact, it actually only has kept going up. And that's because we're treating this like a real business. Like we don't wanna be dependent on one article to run our entire blog. If we're dependent on one article to run our entire blog, we're in real trouble. And then, it's, then that's when the algorithm updates get scary because it's like, oh my God, this whole thing's riding on this one article. What if it dips from two to three to f number five and then my whole business is done? We have to diversify. We have to, you know, cover a lot of different things. We have to know that traffic does not equal revenue. So we also have to keep increasing our base. So if my traffic goes from 500k, you know, 1000 visitors a month down to 400, well, that's still 400,000 monthly readers. It's not like it's zero. So we have to keep increasing our base, keep pushing these things forward. Ultimately, as I learned this and the more content I create on YouTube and teaching this, you know, I was teaching blogging on my blog and it's not the best way to learn just reading. It's much easier and better to learn on YouTube. And I just started that a few months ago. So we're creating this, what we call the unkillable machine on Google and on YouTube with six to seven different revenue streams that aren't just dependent on one thing. So ultimately, I just want to, you know, hammer that home that traffic doesn't equal revenue, but we are appeasing the algorithms. We are definitely appeasing the algorithms when it comes to on-page SEO and off-page SEO. So, you know, on-page SEO is things like using Surfer to, you know, optimize the article for robots. Here's the exact keywords and the amount of keywords you need. And, you know, in my course, I talk about exactly how to structure the headings and, you know, FAQ schema and all these other things that we are appeasing the algorithms when it comes to on-page SEO and backlinks, other, you know, that AI knows when other sites link to us. So those are the two main factors, on-page and off-page. So we are appeasing them. We have to think about how to future-proof our site so that we're not being reactive to algorithm updates, but, you know, weathering the storm and actually, you know, focusing on the future and like that end goal is not just to worry about each algorithm update, but to like create the best possible content and future-proof our site from all algorithm updates. So how do we do that? Well, it's based on search intent and user signals. So search intent really comes down to ending the search journey. So ultimately, the best content will ultimately win because when somebody Google something and they click on, let's say article number one, and then they go back to Google and then they click on article number two and they end there, that tells Google that they ended the search journey on article two. Article two is better, that's an algorithm ranking signal that might increase that article over time with enough data points and enough thousands of visitors doing that. So it's based on data collection, it's based on ranking and then seeing user signals based on what people are actually doing on the article. So that's why really all of this is mastering search intent. It's mastering not just what keyword research they have in a report, but what they actually want when they land on the article. So you have to blanket that topic 
For example, if I'm writing about e-commerce platforms and it's my article on the top 10 e-commerce platforms, I better say that here's the best one for small business, here's the best one for large business, here's the best one for drop shipping, here's the best one for beginners, and cover basically every persona that might read the article because then somebody feels like in their heart when they read it, okay, the bases are covered, I get it. That's ultimately what you want to you know, do to end the search journey and avoid people from going back and clicking another article. So ultimately that comes down to you know, search intent and user signals and ending the search journey. And it comes down to writing articles for both robots, like search engines, and human beings. So we cover in my course, you know, the content assembly line and how we create a minimum viable post V1 optimized for robots, basically with the best on-page SEO, but it might not be the best possible articles because we don't want to waste all our time, not everything ranks, but then over time, updating that for human beings based on you know, engagement, tables of contents, interactive elements, and all of those things, better readability to make it better for both robots and human beings. So algorithms only get smarter and the best content will ultimately win. And I've taken hits, but because I've, you know, built a business, revenue really hasn't been impacted. And this is really why building a true brand and not pigeonholing yourself into one tiny niche site is really paramount because you need to have multiple articles ranking. You need to be in multiple sub niches so that things don't take a huge impact. So let's actually talk about the product review update because that's the big one that everyone's talking about right now is the product review update. And there's actually just a release of March, 2022, a recent update as well on the product review update. So when we talk about product reviews, we have to talk about what are they? You know, well, we talk about Google and YouTube with product reviews, it's a little bit different. So when you're on YouTube, if I was here recommending like this light here, I've got this fancy light and it's the Nanlite PavoTube 26C. And if I wanted to do a review on this, I would need to hold it and I would be like, okay, look, it has dimming features, it has hue saturation, I can switch this and I can change the color and I can do all these things. And when I'm doing that, you know, on YouTube, people expect a very specific and unique piece of content actually with the product and actually reviewing the product. On Google, it's not quite the same. So when you're writing blog posts and articles, especially the best of like roundup posts, like the best you know, backlights for YouTube, it's gonna be a list and it's gonna have key features, it's gonna have benefits, but it's not gonna have some crazy in-depth content. It's not necessarily a product review, it's a roundup post. So you have to kind of cover the difference. You know, The in-depth nature of the product review is based on the type of content that it is. So it really comes down to what are we reviewing? Well, when we want to make money, you know, most of the money is made in these roundup posts for affiliate revenue, right? And the good news is when you're a blogger, like these are the least complicated ones to write. You don't have to dive super deep into it. But the more that Google does these product review updates, the more deeper we have to get because they start giving us different ideas. So here is the Google uh, a news article on the Google March 2022 product review update. And this is what stood out to me. So they're looking for when reviewing things on your blog, in-depth analysis, actual product use, unique information, and comparable or comparable, however you want to recommend that, product coverage. So those are the four things. And I look, I like this bullet list here. So express expert knowledge when appropriate, provide quantitative measures about how a product measures up in various categories of performance. So this works specifically for certain types of products really well, right? Like a television, like an LG versus Samsung that has different things like white balance and, uh, you know, dimensions and, uh, you know, audio and backlighting and you know lumens and whatever else technically technically speaking that has and then there's also comparable products to consider how they're different benefits and drawbacks just describe how a product has evolved identify key decision making factors um, visuals audio or links to your own experience so here's the question as a blogger how do i do all of these things fast efficiently and if i've never used the product before because here's the truth most people doing reviews on products on the internet have never actually touched the product online sad but true welcome to the real world the matrix pulled out from under your eyes most big sites don't have the time or the resources to buy and use every product that they're recommending they're just putting the ones that make them money at the top it's unfortunate but it's true so how do we create all this comparable and interesting comparison coverage and review products that we might not be all that familiar with or that we've used, but we want to just show Google that it's the best sources of information? Well, in my course, Blog Growth Engine, I talk about and give you templates for this stuff about exactly here's the exact product review, like roundup post template to use. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you an example on my blog of kind of using some you know tricks or hacks or things to make it seem like it's a more in-depth review. And it actually is because we actually realize that, you know, we do want to you know, create the best content. So we do a lot of software type roundup posts and in the software reviews, we can do specific things. So for example, here's an article on mine that ranks really well for webinar software and it has the you know top webinar platforms. So we have the top five across the top here, which is good for engagement. We have the introduction. We have a video, which was we uh, had a team produce. So that's also really important. Like we're actually have a video which is showing engagement and showing you know inside the dashboard and what we actually think. So that's really good. And then we have 
Another section that we use with this is with Gutenberg block editor just to create a simple um, my take section. So this is like my unique perspective on it with a rating system. So this is something you can implement with like cadence blocks or Gutenberg or something in each individual review. But you see that once we get to the company and we want to talk about the product reviews, we're actually, you know, creating, you know, company one and then the same layout. And then we get down to company two and it's the same layout. So you want to just have a template for this that's easy to adapt to. But what's inside the template? Well, let's talk about it. There's the company name. And this is all about on-page SEO and formatting, and we've talked about this in other videos. But we have Riverside number one, best for hosting webinars, streamed on multiple channels. So like, a, you're kind of this is for search intent. Like people understand what this thing is compared to others. Then I have my unique take section. Then we cover the content basically with some paragraph text. Then we go over the main features. And as you see in the features section, we've actually created a custom image here with boxes around this, these red boxes weren't actually here. So that is a unique and custom image that exists nowhere else online. So that's kind of a trick right there. You know, Google can see, oh, this image exists everywhere. It must not be very unique. So then we have features, then we have user experience. So again, we, we actually trialed the software, went into the dashboard, took a unique photo of using it, added these arrows, added this stuff. And now it's like, okay, this is a unique image that exists nowhere else on the internet. So that's a good thing in Google's eyes to actually have unique and actual product use. So that's good. Then we actually have pricing. Then we have what I like, dislike. So then there's actually comparison and contrasting. So we're comparing and contrasting it to different platforms, what you like and dislike, not just all positive stuff, but some negatives as well. And then product updates. So what updates have come out recently? And that covers a lot of the basis here. We cover all the main ones about, you know, in-depth analysis, actual product use, unique information, and comparable product coverage. So when we're thinking about this from a review standpoint, we just have to up our game. We have to make things better. So we have to increase our, you know, make our templates better, make it not just something that has some of the features, some of the pricing, and then that's it. We have to actually try here and make it a little bit better. And you can do that with unique images that don't exist anywhere else. You can use a tool like Awesome Screenshot to screenshot and then add, you know, uh, boxes and rectangles and arrows and then export it. That's a Chrome extension that you can use. And then you can also just create unique content you know, really try. You have to really try and make it better. You can take a lot of experience from the website, but actually trying software, actually seeing the product in use, so really diving deeper in your review is going to be key for this algorithm update. So those are the four main takeaways that I think, you know, you want to basically comes down to search intent. So search intent is number one, you know, give the people what they want. You have to really deeply understand it. So I have other videos on search intent where we cover that more and more in depth, but you have to do that so that you end the search journey with the best possible content blanketing the topic. And then you have to provide, you know, the best possible in-depth analysis with, you know, and templatize it. Make sure that you use actual product use and all of these different things to start competing. And ultimately, the best content wins. You know, AI is getting smarter and smarter, and it's not about tricking it or hacking it or like, you know, you know, trying to hack your way to the top with some little trick or SEO trick. It's really about a long-term strategy. And the good news with blogging is that you can always update these articles. You can always, you can update an article in an indefinite amount of times. If I wanted to update this YouTube video, I can't do it. But with a blog post, I can always update it. So the more that you update it, the smarter the AI gets, the better your content gets, the better your chances of ranking. So another thing is, if it's not easy, it's probably worth doing. You know, it's not easy to dive into dashboards and look at things and add videos to content and, and make them longer and make it better. But you know what? That's kind of what it takes in some of these competitive niches. Not every single article needs to be that way, but a lot of them do. So if it's not easy, it's probably worth doing. So ultimately, when you want to build a blogging business, you don't want to be reliant and scared about Google algorithm updates because I'm not scared at all about them because every single time traffic has been knocked down, we've only increased it, blew past where we were before, and revenue has never dipped. And that is because of the different revenue streams we have the recurring nature of some of the affiliate programs we're in, you know, creating this information business on YouTube and all of these different things because we want to create an unkillable business, an unkillable personal brand that isn't worried about Google or algorithm updates, but is future-proofing content for the future. So if you're interested in learning more, you want to learn more about the exact on-page SEO strategies, the tools I use, how I do link building, how I join affiliate programs and make over $200,000 a month with my blog, make sure to watch that free masterclass, sign up for that training. You can go through it and watch it. And let me know what you think. You know, have you been hit down with some algorithm updates? Are you worried about them? You know, what have you been doing to combat them? Let me know. Please like the video. I hope it was helpful. Comment below and I will see you in the next one.